Good morning. Good morning. As we gather on this third Sunday of Easter and come together to worship and praise God, to fellowship with one another, to hear his message for us today, and feel his love and presence surrounding us always, let us rise. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, by whose hand we are given new birth, by whose speaking we are given new life. Amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life, you are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In baptismal waters our old life is washed away, and in them we are born anew. Glory to you for our oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the spirit of the new creation. In our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope. Where chaos reigns, bring peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen.
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, For the peace of from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Let us pray. O God, your Son makes himself known to all his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may see in him in his redeeming work who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Acts, starting with chapter 2. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know the certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, 
so that your sins may be forgiven. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized. And that day, about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Praise Thanks be to God. God. I love the Lord who has heard my voice and listened to my supplication. For the Lord is The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came upon me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called out. How shall I repay the Lord for all the good things God has done for me? I will live in the trials of the Lord and God the I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. Precious Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of my Lord's house, in the midst of your Jerusalem, The second reading is taken from First Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed for the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with precious blood of Christ, like the, that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him, you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by the obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but of imperishable seed through the living and enduring word of God, the word of the Lord. Thanks. Holy Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter, beginning at the 13th verse. Glory to Lord. Now on that same day, two disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, 
but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, asked him, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, Things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near to the village where they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then he told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today we have two of Jesus' followers who are heading away from Jerusalem towards Emmaus. Maybe they're heading out of town because of their fear, despair, or hopelessness, but they're definitely heading out of town. And suddenly there's a strange man talking with them, asking questions about the one he had hoped would be the Messiah. The two travelers informed the stranger of how the past week the one they had hoped would be their Messiah had been tried, crucified on the cross, and laid in the tomb. And they continued with the story of the bizarre events of that particular day. The woman not finding the body at the tomb, seeing angels who said that he was alive. The two disciples who went to the tomb and also found it empty. The two disciples are in sad days. Not only do they not know that Jesus was the Messiah, the Christ, the promised one, they don't know that it's Jesus who's actually walking with them on the road and who's also talking with them right there. They told them some of the women in our group went to the tomb this morning. They said they found it open, and some of them also saw Jesus alive. Some of the men went later to the tomb and they found that, yes, the tomb was open, but Jesus was nowhere to be seen. They didn't understand why Jesus, this stranger walking with them, didn't seem to know everything that had happened that past week. And so they related all the things that had happened. We had hoped, they said, with disappointment and longing, that he was the one to redeem Israel. And as they continued to talk, Jesus takes the scriptures they've known throughout their lives, taking the same scriptures that Jesus had taught them, and he explained everything about the Messiah. That the Messiah would suffer, but also the Messiah would rise, would be raised, so that the glory of the Father might be revealed through him. And they said later, Did our hearts not burn within us as he explained to us the scriptures? Jesus must have gotten an earful from the companions with which he walked to Emmaus. Their guard was down, and they didn't recognize him. 
And so they said exactly what they were thinking and feeling. The same thing happened to Ulysses S. Grant, the famous Union general whose leadership probably won the Civil War for the North. On his way to a reception held in his honor, he was caught in a rain shower. A stranger walking the same direction had no umbrella, and so Grant offered to share his. As it turned out, the stranger was headed for the same reception. As the two were walking along, the second man admitted he had never seen Grant and that he was only going in order to satisfy a personal curiosity. And the man said, between us, I've always thought that Grant was a very much overrated man. And Grant said, that's my view also. <laughs> the three men are walking along the road, and this, the man doesn't seem to understand everything that's been going on, and then they talk about the scriptures. But before they know it, they've arrived at the place where they're going. And as he seems to want to go on, they said it's late, so they invite him to come in and eat with them, and he accepts. Though it turns out that maybe he was the one who had done the inviting all along. Truly, when they sit down to eat, it starts to come back to them where they saw this stranger before. Truly, they start to remember other meals they've shared together. The bread and fish picnic where the 5,000 were fed, last supper in the upper room days before when they gathered frightened, when he spoke of things they didn't understand and they didn't want to hear, when he passed the cup and broke the bread, surely it starts to come back to them. But it's the breaking of the bread that does it. It's when he breaks the bread that they finally remember where they've met this man before. It's when he breaks the bread. When the flesh of the bread is torn and the crumbs fall to the table, it's then their eyes are open, and they can see what's really happening. It's when he breaks the bread, they're brought back from the shadows of death and realize that life has won. After Jesus reveals himself through the breaking of the bread, the disciples realize who he is, and they run back to tell the others about their experience. They don't walk back slowly to Jerusalem. They've got something they really want to tell, and they just can't wait to get there. And I don't think they just ran at a slow pace. They went at breakneck speed. They almost couldn't run fast enough. <coughs> we don't know who they were, probably not of the twelve, but some of the other women and men who followed Jesus. They're heading home from Jerusalem, probably there when Jesus died on the cross, and just now found the courage to go home. They left the community, and that's important. They don't stick around with the other men and women. They left. Did they remind you of someone else? Thomas, maybe? That Thomas left and missed Jesus? These men left and missed what the disciples, the other twelve, had learned, that Jesus had indeed risen? I think one thing we learned from last week's <coughs> excuse me, lesson about Thomas in this lesson is that it's important to stay in the community of Christ. Harry Emerson Fosdick was a great preacher of yesteryear, and one of his great books called Doctor, Dear Mr. Brown had a conversation in it where Harry talked with Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown had heard a, preacher, a sermon preached by Fosdick in which Fosdick held a ticket in his hand that had a stub attached to it. The stub would, of course, be removed at the time that the ticket was used. However, there is a warning printed on the stub that says, <clears throat> not good if detached. Then Fosdick said that as Christian people, we represent the stub, and the ticket represents the church, and stamped on each of us through the mark of our baptism, it says, not good if detached. Meaning your life and my life isn't quite as good if we become detached from the church, the body of Christ. Remembering who you are involves remaining attached to the body of Christ. I believe that it's through a relationship with the church 
with all of its faults, with all of its biases, with all of its shortcomings, a relationship with the church is still a life-giving and life-fulfilling attachment. Each week we gather and share communion. Each week the community gathers in Christ's name and recalls that special meal as Jesus is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. It sounds self-explanatory, but this communion meal is for a communal gathering of the community. The word communion has the same Latin root communis as the words common, as in they held everything in common, communal and community. Communion meal is not just a pious moment with Jesus and me. When we come to the table of the Lord, we come with people who are different from us, culturally, socially, ethnically, personally, but the communion meal unites us. On the road of life, there are many times that we don't see God. We don't recognize him or what he's doing, if anything. We might even ask, where are you, God? But where are you is the wrong question. God is there. God is here. It's not a question of his absence. It's a question of our recognizing him. It was a great joy for the disciples when they recognized him at the table. But the comfort of his presence isn't limited to those times he reveals us. He came to the disciples on the road, and they did not have to find him. His presence was there, and their hearts burned with joy in hearing his word and in being with him, even when their eyes would not let them see him or their minds let them comprehend the truth. But it was Easter, and Easter is true, and Jesus is true. The tomb is open. Jesus is somewhere to be seen in his holy supper. He is the Christ, the promised one of God, the one whose life and death has recovered our sin and restored our life. And yes, he is with us walking on the road. He's right here. Even though we don't see him, even though we can't understand, we did not find him, but he has found us. He came to the disciples on the road, and he comes to us now on his body and blood, and he will come again in glory in his kingdom that has no end. For Christ has died, Christ is risen, and Christ will come again. Amen.
Let us confess together our faith in the word of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from might, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. United in the hope and the joy of resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Ever-present God, you make yourself known in the breaking of the bread and in the bonds of community. Reveal yourself to us in the faces of all we meet. Strengthened by your body and blood, let us boldly live out your good news. Hear us, O God. As we know you in the breaking of the bread, we know you in the grains of the field and the flowing waters. Care for the earth you lovingly create. Strengthen those who safeguard threaten land and water. Hear us, O God. You are the authority to whom we dedicate our lives. Help us keep the needs of those most vulnerable at the forefront of our community. Move us to care for any who are disregarded or oppressed. Hear us, O God. Mothering God, you feed and comfort those who hunger. Open the hearts of those who hoard resources and lead them to share your abundance. We pray for anyone hungering for your comforting presence this day. We especially pray for healing comfort for those on the prayer list. Sharon, Ronnie, Mandy, and John. Here, so God, you pour out your love to those. You pour out your love on those who are oppressed. Support and comfort everyone who is marginalized by gender or sexuality, and those whose stories are not believed. Form this community. Form this community to listen faithfully and speak honestly in our ministry together. Hear us, O oh God. We remember with thanksgiving all your beloved saints. As you have raised them to eternal life, abide with us in your promise of resurrection. Hear us, O oh God. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. 
peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Share God's peace with one another. Peace, peace be with you, Pastor. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. In the breaking of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour us out in service to the world, through Christ our Lord. should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, 
for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, and who in dying has destroyed death, and in rising has brought us eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Who was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. When he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. He also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Come and know Christ broken and poured out for you.
body of our Lord Jesus Christ, his holy and precious blood, strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist us in this ministry on which we are sent forth. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring this sacrament, that through the body and blood of your Son, we all may know the comfort of your abiding presence. Amen. Amen. The God of all, who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in the new creation. Amen. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. Go in peace. Serve the risen one.